In this video, I'm gonna cover part two of our series dedicated to automating 99% of your content workflow. In the previous video, we covered planning and also the creation process. In this video, we're gonna go deeper into the editing and that post-production process of taking the videos that we've recorded and editing them and working with our team to ultimately get them posted to social media. And then in future videos, I'll cover repurposing, posting, and also analytics, which will complete the cycle from start to finish. Once we enter the editing and the post-production part of the process, we really need a content management system. And that's what I've built out in Airtable. And I'll cover this system and how I've implemented this in more specificity as we continue. But we're really trying to get a handle on all of the content and information, the video, the images, the copy. We're trying to maintain the status of all the media, the images, using automations around chat GPT when we can, and also managing the written portions of all the content we create, whether it's copy for a social media post or description for a YouTube video. And then ultimately maintaining a storage database of all of our content where we can tag that content and we can also search it. We're creating all this content, so let's make sure that we can use it later when we need to. So in my specific system, most of the post-production process happens in the content tab and the overall workflow goes from top to bottom. And we'll start here in the content inbox. This is really where all new content comes into the system so that we know it's there and that we're taking all the right actions to make sure it gets to who needs to have it and what needs to be done with it. So in my system, all new content comes into the system and each piece of content will get a unique ID. And this really helps us keep track of this content through the entire life cycle of that content. We also automatically create a description from the file name and we'll also create some thumbnails that make it easy for us to track content as it goes through the system. And we make sure we know what the format is, which brand it's coming from, and the desired workflow. Here you can see we have some content that needs to be repurposed only. Here you can see a weekly YouTube video. We also have other types of workflows like vertical videos. And then we also have content that we distribute into the communities we belong to, different types of promotions, and a variety of other workflows that we've designed. These workflows in general just define for a given piece of content, where do we want it distributed to, when that content should be published and then also basic requirements for that workflow does that workflow need copy does it need an image does it need media does it need a title for instance a youtube video is going to need a thumbnail it's going to need a video it's going to need a description and it's also going to need a title but in terms of vertical videos some platforms don't require a title so the workflows allow us to define what we need to have in order to call a piece of content done so in the inbox here someone is just managing the inbox and is going to look at this on a daily basis and just make sure we have a brand if there isn't one make sure there is a workflow if there isn't one and then decide when is that going to be published if there isn't already a published date. Now the system is smart enough to set these fields automatically but in some cases the system just truly doesn't know what type of content it is so you'll have to set them manually. Once you've set these three specific fields the system knows exactly what it needs to do in order to get this content to the finish line and then it allows it to move to the in progress section of the content tab over here and this section here gives the project manager or whoever's running the machine a complete overview of everything in the machine that is currently being edited, getting ready to be posted. This first view here is going to give you an overview of all the content at a high level and its published date so you can get things done in a specific order. You can see the description, you can see the brand, you can also see the final media type for this content and what still needs to be completed in order to call it done. And then you can get easy access to applications that are part of our workflow like Frame.io or Google Drive. If I click this, this is going to take me straight to Google Drive where I can see all of the assets related to this specific piece of content. In this case, it's text, so I just see a document. But if it were video, I could open this up and then see the video right here. Here we can see this piece of content still needs a title. This one needs an image and also a video. So at a high level, the project manager can come in here every day and just see what is outstanding, the date, and what needs to be done. And then from there, they can further drill into specific items like just content that needs media. So if I click here, we're going to see all of the outstanding videos that need work. We can see that they're in progress or that they need review and who it's assigned to. We can also get easy access to the editor guidelines. These make it easy to build in consistency into the workflow. So if I click on it, anyone on the team can get access to our YouTube video guidelines. Or if it's for vertical videos, they can open up those and know exactly what they need to do. This helps editors know exactly what the objective is and the given instructions, and it makes it easy to bring on new video editors. This specific view here is going to show us all of the outstanding content that needs video. This one is going to show us everything that needs artwork, like our YouTube video. And these workflows where we define what type of content needs copy, image, media, and title is also helping us decide 
decide what shows up in each one of these views. This view here is gonna show us all of the content that needs copy. And of course, this view here is gonna show us all of the content that needs titles. Now, one thing that's cool to point out is that the system is integrated with ChatGPT. So when it comes to titles and copy as well, ChatGPT is going to review the video, make a transcription from it, and also give us suggestions on what titles we might want to use. So I can see here that ChatGPT has already given us 10 different title suggestions. And then we can review this and then pick the best one and then finally whittle it down so that only one title remains. And if we wanna tweak this, we surely can. Now again, this view here is showing us an overview of all of the different content. So this is great for a project manager to come in and on a daily basis, really have a bird's eye view of everything that needs to get done. But we have similar views that are broken down by team as well. So we can see all of the videos that are assigned to Sven or the videos that are assigned to Pam at any given moment, their publish date and the media status. And then we also have direct links to frame.io in case we want to review these videos or also provide feedback. We can leave comments and we can also leave detailed instructions, visual instructions on the videos as well. And then also control the status, which will link back to Airtable itself. And then again, the editors have access to the creative guidelines as well. And then we also link back to the specific Descript project where the video was actually edited. And the editor also has access to all the original assets where the videos were recorded from in case they need to make tweaks down the line. Now, what's also nice as well is if you're a content agency, you can create similar views for your clients. Here we can see all of the content that is assigned to client X, and then you can give them a similar way to review the videos that you want them to review. And just like I showed you before, your clients could open up frame.io, could leave comments, could even approve or send it back to you. And this is a nice, easy way for you to collaborate with your clients. And then using this here, you can give them their own link where they can view just a read-only view of that same data, where they can see everything but not necessarily be able to change anything, but they can still get access to the important links. Now, as I mentioned before, you also have access to a content database. This is gonna help us recycle content. So we can always come back here and see all of the content that is flowing through the system, even the content that was recorded months and months or even years ago. And what that will allow us to do do is to come back and just reuse content. We can assign a new workflow to it. We can assign a new publish date, and that's just going to push the content through the system again, and we can repost or re-edit content and use it again, and really just get a lot more life from the content that we've already produced. What I find is a lot of companies are always trying to create new content, and they don't really fully utilize all of the content they already have. So this allows us to really make sure we really use all the content that we create to its fullest. We also have a system here that we can use for tagging content. So we can add the different tags of the topics that we talk about. And then we can use a built-in search over here to find any kind of content that is relevant to something that we might want to repurpose. Here we can type in Descript and it's gonna pull up all of the content that had Descript in the description or if it was a part of one of the tags. So this is the overall post-production view so that we can manage all of the content in a really streamlined way we can see all of the new content that's coming into the system. We can make sure it's scheduled. The project manager can get a high level overview and understand all of the content in the system that needs to get done from an overview or a very specific level in terms of whether it's video, artwork, copy, or a title. And then we can break it down even further by team member or clients. And then we also have that database that we can use to recycle content over the long term. So there you go. I hope you found this video valuable. This is gonna allow you to really automate that post-production process with all of your content and your team and everything else that goes into that. In the next video, we're gonna cover the next piece of this puzzle. We're gonna talk about how do we actually take all this content and post it to social media and manage that chaotic process. Make sure to check out the link that you see that just popped up above. Check it out and I'll see you there.